Welcome to our Arctic van tour. Many of you guys have been asking for this, so we thought we'd do it while we're still in the Arctic. So, getting started with it, the base vehicle is a 2013 Peugeot Boxer medium wheelbase. When we first bought it, it had no glazing in it, still had a bulkhead in it, and it had racking in the back. Now, it's kitted out to take us up into, well, the coldest so far is minus 39 degrees. So the most noticeable upgrade is probably the Rogue Alloy CC3s. And for this trip, we've got Goodyear Ultra Grips on them. So these are a 17, I believe, by eight wide. The other thing while we're down here is this van actually has a 50 mil lift kit on it, which is a spacer on top of the strut to bring the front end up a bit. Because when we put air suspension on the back, we noticed that the van was raking forward. So one of the big jobs on this van when we got it was glazing. So we've got this repeated on the other side. And then in the back corner over there, we've got one of the small camper van glass windows. And then we've got two bits of glazing on the back door. All of this was sourced from van pimps. Um, we've been very happy with it. We installed it ourselves. It's not too much of a difficult job if you're handy with the tools and that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, so far been fantastic. No leaks, absolutely spot on. So the next thing that we sourced from van pimps was these side steps. I believe you can only get them in L2 and L3. I could be wrong, I'll put it on screen if I am. Um, but they essentially bolt into the chassis member underneath and they're strong enough that even I can stand on them. One of, I think, the coolest features is having the Max Tracks just shoved to the side of the van. Um, now, many of you are probably thinking, how's he done that? Has he put bolts through the van or anything like that? No, it's much simpler. All you do, uh, pull off like that, and they are on with four pop magnets and four bolts on that side, which sandwiches them together. Our van has a speed limiter of 65 miles an hour. So if anyone does decide to do this, I will say it's at your own risk. That's what we've tested it up to. Maybe a little bit faster down a hill, but we're limited. So that's all we've been able to test them to. And then to put them back up, all you do, bosh, done. The one thing we've had a lot of questions about back from when we were doing Instagram more so than YouTube is the roof rack. Because I know obviously a lot of people like the expensive ones, I'm not gonna name any names, but they are very expensive. This is built out of 42 mil by 42 mil Unistrut on the roof. Two runners down each side, and then four cross sections, mainly dictated by where the solar panels finish. So on the roof, we've got two 100 watt Renergy solar panels. Because we were coming to the Arctic, solar wasn't our biggest concern. But the side plates, they are plastic UPVC from a glazing company, a plastics company, um, which cut to shape with a jigsaw, and we think, look, absolutely spot on. So we've got some accessories. We've got wow LED lights in there. Um, we've got our Blink security camera system screwed to each side, and we've got warning lights. Basically in the event that white van goes into a white snow drift, we've got something amber that then lights up and warns people where we are. One of the things that makes this van stand out probably the most is the front end. We've got two quad LED, wow LED pods uh, on each side, and we put those on purely for looking for animals coming out of verges. And to be honest, they've saved us, I think, twice that I can count on. So for the sake of 25 quid, perfect piece of kit. 52 inch light bar, that's just an eBay. I think it was 50 pound. If I can give you one piece of advice, if you're gonna come and do a trip like this, buy expensive lighting. Because that, we lose more LEDs by the day. Every time the temperature dips, I mean, today's minus 20, Every time we dip, we lose another LED off that light bar. We've got two seven inch maypoles down on the front grill. They single-handedly put out more light than that entire light bar up on the roof. Just goes to show the difference between expensive lighting and cheap lighting. And in the grand scheme of things, they're not even expensive. I think they were 130 pound or 160 pound for a pair, but the light output far exceeds that of that light bar. The next lighting thing we have on the front is down in each corner, we've got an LED DRL, more of a little toy that I like to put in. I like playing with lights. Um, we seem to have lost one 
on the trip. Not entirely sure where it's gone. The plug's still there, but the light unit, gone. The big thing everyone's interested in. So we have a terra firma 12,000 pound, which I believe is five and a half ton winch strapped to the front of this. Now, this happened after I decided to try and turn around and kill the forest in the UK and got it stuck. Now, if we'd have had a winch, we could have winched ourselves out to the tree across the other side and not thought any more of it. As it turned out, it became a whole ordeal. We had to pay for recovery. Silly mistake learned. On this trip, we have used this. Obviously, if you will have seen our We Crashed in the Arctic video, in the end, that's what got us out. And if we'd have done that to begin with, we'd have been out within 10 minutes. So a winch for this trip. Now, the big question a lot of people will have is the winch bumper. Because unless it's a sprinter, you cannot find one anywhere. This is from a company in Poland called BG 4x4, I believe it's called. And they make them for all iterations. So they do it from the earlier version to this, they do it for this one, and they do it for the newest shape, which I believe has a slightly different configuration on the front end. So that completes the front end tour of this van. Round to the back of the van now. Arctic, you end up with a lot of places that you don't necessarily have straight access to fuel. We found it's been very good, but there's been one occasion where because of weather they'd struggled to get the fuel to the station and they hadn't had diesel for three weeks. We had a range of 40 miles and we had 33 miles to do. So it's going to be a little dicey. Before we left, we put on a 20 litre carrier for diesel. Now this is just bolted through the door onto the backside. Um, but yeah, we've got 20 litres of cold treated diesel in there at the minute. Next thing we've got is we've got two WOW LED pods up on the roof. They're fantastic just for turning on if you're in an area or even if you hear someone outside the van. Flick the light switch on, it lights up the whole area. The other thing we've got there is our blink camera so we can see out the back of the van. Um, we have 360 degree view on this van with cameras so whenever we're inside we can see whatever's going on outside. Um, we have, and I know it's kind of difficult to see behind my childish purchase, um, we have a rhino ladder which Tom, our very good friend, happened to have lying around and he gave it to us when we bought this van. We didn't know he had it, but he offered it to us. So thank you very much, Tom. A lot of people have asked about how we've got the spare wheel on. So that's a little bit ratchet, shall we say. Um, we have a, two pieces of Unistrut at the bottom attached to the round tubes on the ladder with exhaust clamps. That takes the weight of the wheel downwards and then to attach the wheel, we use ratchet straps in a Baja truck configuration, if that makes sense to anybody that watches Baja. So essentially it's like an upside, upside down Y on the back. So you've got a strap coming over the top, two straps coming up, and together they pull and cinch it back into the ladder. Which, to be honest, we've had this on since April when we drove to Scotland. It's been on the back ever since, and now we're 5,000 miles into this Arctic trip. Still not a problem. On the back, we have our rubbish bag, as we use it for. Um, it's not a trash -a it's one of the 20 pound eBay ones. And to be honest, we've used, abused, and it's still going strong. And unlike some of the other products, it doesn't fade. It has stayed completely black. There is no graying on it or anything like that, which we're very happy with. Now, one thing that I will show you, which is fantastic, is we have reversing lights, additional ones on this. Um, but I'm just gonna have to clear a bit of snow off for you to be able to see them. So in the back, we've got two WOW LED, six, uh, six or five inch pods, which come on with a relay when the reversing lights turn on. These are invaluable. If you have to reverse down a snowy lane, or to be honest, even where we live in Cornwall, if you have to reverse down the lane at night, the reversing lights on these vans are terrible. So, two of those wide in, relay, as soon as you put them into reverse, they light up, absolutely fantastic. The last feature we have on the back of this van is these recovery points. Now, I can't remember what the company's called that they're from, but they are to be used on a Land Rover Discovery. However, the bolts and the hardware that come with them, they will take the weight. So we've got it drilled through the rear crash member where it attaches to the rear um, chassis legs of the van. And we found that they've been absolutely fine. We've winched it back um, without a problem. Yeah, hopefully we never have to use them. So now we've done the outside of the van on the back doors. Let's have a look at the inside of the back doors. So we've got toys. We've got a NOCO Boost XL, 
which a fantastic bit of kit. It's helped us out many a time with the jump leads. Usually here, where it's empty, we would have our code reader, but we've had to use that on this trip for endless issues with our DPF not being able to regen. Spare battery cables, spare length of wire that is the length of the van. So worst case, you can replace the longest run that's in the vehicle. One of many of Jess's first aid kits. We've got thermal blankets, just in case everything goes to We've got tubes that replaces the hot water tube. Over here is more of our recovery gear and things like that. So you've got winch blanket, which we put a video up and people quickly pointed out that we need to use a winch blanket. So we bought one of those. We've got terra firma, soft shackle. We've got two five meter strops. We've got a selection of um, D-links. Air hose. Now, obviously we showed you the air suspension under the back of the van our air compressors in that corner we'll show you that in more detail once we get under the bed this is multiple pieces of air hose joined together which can allow us to get to the furthest corners of the van to pump up a tire if we need to we've got spare paracord because i don't know if you want to make a washing line or you want to do something like that you can never have too many hammer got to have the most important tool in the whole collection Pride of place, back door. Up the top, we've got our Biltmer sprinkler hose that we didn't realize was a sprinkler hose. That's useful. But also because it's porous, it doesn't freeze because it drains. Um, I guess the last thing to look at is the actual racks these are on. Now, I can't remember what they're called, but they're essentially bedroom organizer racks from Ikea with Velcro, for that, like you would use in an office for cable tidying, holding everything on. So obviously you just rip the Velcro off, things come off exactly as you need them. Yeah, that's the back doors. So while we're at the back of the van, one thing that you've probably all noticed is these covers and this. So these are triple layered, I'm looking at Jess behind the camera, triple layered uh, double bubble foil. Now they're obviously open, you can get through, but you lose a massive amount of heat through where the doors seal in the middle. This means we can have the back doors open and all that heat that you've generated doesn't just come flying out the back doors. This is just a thick wall blanket that we had around the house. Um, again, the door seals are terrible on vans. So this stops the water tanks getting too cold, it stops the pumps getting too cold, it stops the batteries getting too cold. Um, our diesel heater pulls its air from under the bed. So if here and here gets really cold, but in here is hot, it still has to work to heat the very cold air. So at least with this, it allows the air to generate through and it starts to build. So our garage generally on this trip has sat, I would say probably around, if the cabin's 20 degrees, it's usually around 12 to 15 degrees, to give you an idea, versus usually when that's not there, we've had the garage down to zero at the beginning of the trip. So for your viewing pleasure, I have now emptied everything out that on this trip is currently living under the bed. So let's have a look at our systems. So here you've got our Chinese Triclix five kilowatt diesel heater and our spare unit. This is our cold water system. So we've got a 75 litre tank here, triple water filters down to five micron. And then we've got a, I think it's a Pentair pump with a Seaflow uh, accumulator just to stop you getting pulsing water. We've then got our hot water tank here, going through a bobble heat exchanger down there, which obviously takes heat from the diesel heater to heat up. That then goes with the same pump across to the hot water tanks. We then move to the other side, which is our electrical. Now, it's not the neatest, I'll admit, before people jump in the comments, but it's serviceable and it works. So we have our absolutely fantastic Fogstar dual 280 amp hour batteries. These have been absolutely fantastic on this trip. We were unsure because we had a lack of reviews when we went to purchase them. But honestly, if anybody is thinking about Fogstar, just do it. The guys there are fantastic. If you've got any technical questions at all, they'll answer them all hours of the day. These beauties are absolutely fantastic. Now, earlier in the video, I mentioned that obviously we didn't put a huge amount of solar on the roof. But what we do have is dual Victron B2Bs. Now, we've got a 30 amp and an 18 amp because... Our alternator is 150 amp, and you're not really meant to exceed one third of your alternator's uh, capacity. So what we've done is we've gone for a 30 and an 18, and then put the cooling mod on them. 
um, which allows us to get a bit more out of them as far as efficiency and whatever else. So up here we've got dual fuse boxes, self-explanatory. We've got a Renogy Wanderer solar controller. Well, this is then our 240 volt hookup charger, which comes in through here on this wire into the fuse box and then to the socket on the wall, which then obviously has this charger plugged into. And that wraps up the end of the bed portion. Oh, one thing I have forgotten. Here's our Renogy 3000 watt inverter, um, which is obviously able to power our uh, hob and microwave and everything that we need inside. So under the back end of our van, we've got two airbags under here. It's single link, so it's just teed in the middle and it goes up inside the van to a pump. Um, we found it to be absolutely fantastic. And to be honest, it stops all sagging on the back end. And as you can see, the back end is level with the front. Just because it's not exciting, but it's useful to people building this van. Um, our water point is here. You'll have to ignore our huge icicle. Um, I put the filler cap on top of the wheel when we were talking to some people. I moved the van and forgot that the key was in the cap on top of the wheel and it snapped it. So we've got an emergency fuel cap fill on for the minute. But essentially these pillars in these vans are hollow. So what you can do is drill into this back section here in front of the light and you can get into it from where you service the rear light. And then we've got the water tanks under here on top of the wheel arch. So that goes straight in and through. Let's quickly show you the electrical one on the other side because we've achieved the same thing. So around here this is where we've got our electrical point. Very standard, flip up cap, it's not that exciting. But like the other side, this again is hollow. So you can take the 240 volt wire through the service hatch for the rear light and straightforward and all our electrical system is in this section here which you'll see when we do the inside part of the van tour. So, what you can probably see is the tip of the diesel heater, just under here there, that's for our coolant preheater. Now, if anyone's doing this trip, I cannot urge you enough preheater, because otherwise a diesel engine, if it won't start, it will very much struggle to. Um, we can run this, it gets up to 90 degrees in about an hour. Um, it's the H calorie heater. I think it was about 300 pounds on deal on our website. An hour, it gets it up to 90 degrees. You start the van, let the van idle for a little while just to get the oils warmed, and then you drive it away. But it starts like it's a normal day in England. It's fantastic. So now that we've finished the outside tour, I reckon it's time we have a look at the inside. Now that we're inside, let's start with the cab. Alexa, turn on the cab. Okay. So, something we found very useful is having these in. Whether you get in at night, um, you can obviously voice activate them, or you can control them from the app on your phone. It's just two spotlights, the same as we've got down the van. Moving forward, something for this trip, which was absolutely brilliant, is the Thermapro multi-sensor thermometer so we've got a sensor outside we've got a, this is its own sensor and we've got a sensor in the garage as well um, obviously because our bed is separating the whole area you need to keep an eye on both temperatures next thing you notice is the thermal blinds now Jess is absolutely fantastic at this and has made us blinds they are triple bubble um, with waterproof material on both sides so it doesn't matter if you get a bit of condensation or anything like that it just sort of wipes off doesn't soak in so they're really good and we notice a big difference as well if we don't put them up and we just put the external cover on so they do work um, I'm a sucker for a stereo so we've got a JVC double din touchscreen it's got CarPlay it's got Android Auto um, as well I'm a sucker for audio so there is a subwoofer a Pioneer 8 inch subwoofer under my seat um, yeah the audio in these vans is absolutely crap it's not what I made for 
but yeah absolutely fantastic upgrades we've also swapped the standard cigarette lighter for usb neither of us smoke better off having the power so we've got that in there as well and then this is where our controller is for our diesel coolant heater tap it on and that's it the best thing we've done for comfort now is you'll notice these aren't exactly your standard run-of-the-mill Peugeot box seats so these are electric seats fully electric operated out of a Land Rover Discovery 5 which I believe is sort of a 2020 to 2022 plate they are incredible honestly the most comfortable seats we've ever had in any vehicle we've had Mercs, we've had BMs, we've had different cars. These, absolutely incredible. We've driven Cornwall to Scotland, and obviously now we're a good 5,000 miles, I think, into this trip. Absolutely incredible. We love them, and we wouldn't change them for anything else. And obviously this one is on your standard swivel. So, yeah, that's the cab. So on these vans, there's a big height difference between the cab here and obviously the subfloor. So what we ended up doing was building this step. Now, we originally built this for shoe storage, but because we had to get all the tyres under the bed in the back, this is now our toolbox. So we've got all kinds of spares, we've got belts, diesel heater, wire, all sorts of tools, obviously, drew, screw driver, uh, multimeter, tyre plug kit, spare diesel heater parts, spare lights, spare water pumps for different things. Um, yeah, this is absolutely brilliant. We should have really used it like this to begin with, because now you don't have to go in the back every time you need a stupid thing like a screwdriver. It's all inside in the warm. So, perfect time to talk about the roofing. We have got this beautiful wood panelling. Um, it's actually felt backed and then it's got wood veneer strips in it, which makes it incredibly light and incredibly easy to fit. They come in three meter by 60 centimeter sections. That's what we got for this. Two panels, did the roof, and because of the offset cabinets, we use the cut off from here to go in that back corner. Absolutely spot on. Um, it weighs nothing. When you pick it up, you can literally pick it up with two fingers in the cardboard packaging. It's fantastic. We figured for the time it would have taken to do all the strips, get it all cut down on a table saw, sanded, try not to burn edges, all the rest of it, it made more sense to do this. It weighs less. It costed a little bit more when we added it up, but I think the, the finished product really kind of speaks for itself. While we're up here, it's a perfect time to look at our roof fence. So, again, we've got Jess's covers, all nice and waterproof. Um, we've got Fiamma uh, 350 by 350 mil roof vents. So, standard roof vent, twizzle that, you've got pull and you've got push, and that's how they work. They are not the quietest, um, and they also don't fully seal. They don't leak, but they allow air flow, which I guess in the UK is probably quite useful. It cuts down on condensation. Up here in the Arctic, you kind of lose a lot of heat through them. They're not really the ideal thing. Looking back, we should have gone Max Airs, but they're a lot of money. So you live and you learn. But then Jess's cover just snaps straight back into there. Absolutely fantastic. So moving around the roof, something so simple, but honestly makes the world of difference when you're in a van. Drying rack. So this was about 30 quid, I think, on Amazon. Um, just screws in. We've got, obviously, this framework here. Absolutely spot on. We'll show you later, but the diesel heater exit is down there and um, it's got a directional head on it. So you point it up, we've been on campsites, obviously you do your washing and everything else. Merino, you can't tumble dry, so you have to um, air dry. Absolutely brilliant, dries really quickly. We've also got this one in the cab as well, um, just for adding extra things on. We've got like a sock rack that we can put, underwear rack sort of thing we can put on there. So fold that away, all nice and neat, takes up no space. We've got Huawei MiFi router. Um, this has got a 4G SIM in from EE. Uh, absolutely brilliant, although we found that the signal actually in Scandinavia far exceeds that of the UK. So to be honest, we haven't actually had to rely on it too much because we get full, uh, 5G nearly everywhere. It is fantastic up here for phone signal. We've got our standard Chinese diesel heater. We've got the Triclix 5 kilowatt heater. Um, installed down under the bed, extended the cables up just so that we could have it way up out the way. This is made by Bobble. This is our hot water heater. So you flick that on and it will start the circulation pump. So here you can see we have the temperature of the air exchanger and here you can see we've got the temperature of the cold water currently in the tank. Um, flick that on, circulation pump kicks in, uses the heat from the diesel heater and yeah, gives you hot water. Absolutely brilliant bit of kit we find. 
Um, last but not least, we've got our Renergy inverter controller. If you pop that on, and you'll hear in a second, everything beeps as you turn on the hob and the microwave. But yeah, that covers off our sort of control panel. So, roof cupboards in here, I believe they're roughly around 130 centimetres long, just for if other people are wanting to make this. 130 long, I think they're 35 tall, and then basically whatever it went back to the wall at. Um, push to open, we've got three separate sections. We generally keep our cutlery, we've got snacks, we're gonna have to go and do a shop. Um, and then this end we sort of keep like spices, kettle, all that kind of stuff. Um, just quick access stuff really, which is really useful. Um, we then have under counter lights on. We find these absolutely fantastic. Moving down, we've got our great Alexa wall mounted tablet. Um, on this, we've got Spotify installed. Um, you can do radio, you can do whatever you want. It's connected to the Wi-Fi. it connects to the cameras, does everything we need it to do. It's a fantastic little bit of kit. I'll put links in the description because I can't exactly remember where we got the mount from. Um, but it wasn't expensive, it's brilliant. We have soundbar hidden down here, um, that connects to this, so you have a bit better quality audio than just coming out of the tablet. Like I said, I like good audio with subwoofer and everything like that. Kitchen unit now. So we've got this tap, it allows Jess to wash her hair and stuff like that in the sink. Obviously we've got hot and cold. We've got a soap dispenser drilled in, that was interesting. Um, mainly because Jess found this sink online, right? Um, it was composite. What she didn't necessarily realise was that it's granite composite. So we actually have a semi-granite sink in the van. But it got shipped from Germany and both of us were too stubborn to deal with the returns. So we have a granite sink. Yeah, which made fitting that interesting as hell. Um, we have, and this is controversial now when it comes to vans, induction cooking. A lot of the caravan and owners club sort of people won't be keen on the fact that we've gone electric. Um, but we obviously, after showing you our Fogstar 560 amp hour battery bank, have more than enough power to be off grid for about three to five days, depending how much we're cooking and making coffees and stuff like that. So we've got a Domino Indesit hob, absolutely fantastic, just touch control. And you just do that and the hob's on um moving down we've got a microwave in here so we've got a russell hobbs microwave basically it's the thinnest it's the narrowest one that would fit in this 500 mil cabinet for reference because i have quite a laid back seating position and i'm a big lad um this kitchen cabinet for reference for people is 1350 mil long so it fits perfectly just to where my seat comes to but also gives you plenty of workspace obviously standard size chopping board all that kind of stuff so we've got two 500 mil cupboards here and a 300 mil set of drawers everything is on latches so you just push to open like that fantastic pull out bin it's all good and then this pulls forward there's extra space behind um, in there we've got our pots pans um, air fryer that kind of stuff push to open drawers got all our cutlery all that kind of stuff and then we've got extra food, sort of pantry bits and bobs in there, really, is what we use that for. Ordinarily, we would have a kickboard on it, but for this trip, we wanted extra storage. One thing I will say is to anybody that's trying to build this, um, and if you're into photography, have somewhere to put a camera bag. Because otherwise, it becomes an argument. <laughs> no guesses there. It's always in the way. I'll level with you as well. It, it's always in the way. To have somewhere that that can just shove out the way. So we've got a 200 mil gap under here. We were originally going to put a shower in. We decided against it. So yeah, 200 mil gap. Let's you put your camera bag in. You can get boots under it. You can get all sorts under there. Absolutely brilliant. So like the fridge, one of the compromise we didn't want to have to make was the bed. In the last van, we had pull out sort of transporter style beds. Always having to make the bed, always having to hide your bedding away and all that kind of stuff. So this van, we elected to have a fixed bed. Now, I'm not a small person and we like a spacious bed. So we've got a king size bed, so UK five foot. Um, it's not cut down in any way. It pushes right into the corners and it nearly touches the door. It's about that far off. Do you notice as well, obviously we've got this cabinet here. We've got another one here. It's the same size near enough. It just comes to the end of the bed. Um, got a tiny little shelf. Now obviously a lot of people put TVs and stuff in their vans, 
because of the layout, obviously, yeah, there's probably two feet here and there's a window. So you don't really have space, so you'd end up kicking the screen. So what we've done is we've got this tiny little plastic shelf that goes up the back and then sticks out. And what we do is we put Jess's iPad on it. And then obviously because you, it's forward because of the cupboard, it ends up being a fairly reasonable screen to watch while you're in bed. And that's kind of how we get around that. So we've got the Alpicol Adventurer 65 liter, I think it is. Um, inside, you've got a good big fridge section. You've got this freezer up here, um, which you can take this all out and you can just have it only as a fridge. Um, absolutely fantastic. It's got an LG compressor in it. It uses no power. Like you can have it on in the UK. We'll leave this on all the time to stop the seals and stuff drying out in it. And with the solar on the roof, it uses nothing. And we're parked under trees and it, it really doesn't affect it. So yeah, excellent bit of kit. This is part of the bubble heater. So you pull that and that diverts the air through a Y section. There's a little slide inside that moves. So this is now when it's pulled out, it's heating your hot water, push it back in, and it's just coming straight out your diesel vent. So this is what I was saying about a directional one. These fins are at an angle. So depending which way you have it, obviously that's pointing at the floor, push it up like that, and it's pointing at our drying rack. So this is, it makes up our seating area. So we have our seating area yeah, for- This is our second seat. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So this is our second seat. Obviously we share that with the front seat. This creates our dining area. Um, this is probably the clunkiest part of the van. Everything else has been fairly well tried and tested. So in here is our toilet. All you do is you lift that off and then chuck that up there. And as you can see in here, we've got our toilet. We've got a composting toilet from Trebolo. Um, so you lift this off and then inside here, you've got a pee bucket got a little bucket that you put a bag in and put your poo in. We keep toilet roll in this one. Um, we used to keep sawdust in here, but to be honest, because we're not composting it, it now just ends up in toilet paper storage as well. Um, easy enough to empty, that just goes back on. And then you lift the cover back down. In she goes. And that's it. So this is our dining area, right? So you may be thinking all this, you've not seen a table. We've got a table leg here, and then our table top gets hidden from behind here. We've got a lagoon table leg that swivels out. I'll pop it on top of there, and there you go. You've got your seating area. One thing I will say about the lagoon leg is I know they're more expensive. We ordered a cheap one, which wasn't actually that cheap. Um, it was crap. You could literally like bend the corner of it down and bear in mind this is bolted with m8 bolts straight into the metalwork of the van with rev nuts so it's on there this one you can lean on it's got good stability it's strong but also it's clearly not that tight because you can move it definitely go for the real one don't waste the money on the fake one it makes all the difference so as you've probably seen living in the arctic and living in it for the amount of time that we have we've got a few scuffs around the place so obviously we've got some bits to sort out when we get back. That'll be in a future video. Um, but I think that sums up the inside, really. That is Norm. So that concludes our van tour. If you guys have got any questions, feel free to message us on YouTube, comment, or drop us a message on Instagram. We'll try and be as responsive as possible. Um, but yeah, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you in the next video.